Hi everyone, Sean Evans here, the internet's busiest music nerd. <laughs> and it's time for a review of the new Alt-J album, Relaxer. UK progressive and art pop outfit, Alt-J. This is their third full-length album, which I was really excited to hear due to my enjoyment of their past two albums. And I thought the teaser tracks from this record uh, leading up to the release were pretty decent. And if you would ask me about Alt-J back in 2012 when they released their first album, An Awesome Wave, I most likely would have told you that they were one of the more unique groups to debut an album that year. With their kind of seamless and very inventive blend of hip-hop and pop music, electronic music as well, uh, with a touch of folk, their sound was really idiosyncratic, not only with the blend of styles, but the band's approach to groove, also the very yelpy, nasal lead vocals from the band's frontman, Joe Newman. And yet the band's music was was so freaking catchy, not an easy balance to strike. Now the band's follow-up record, This Is All Yours, took a much more obtuse and subtle approach. This album was the definition of a slow burner. A lot of tracks on this thing were not consistent sonically with a lot of what was on the band's debut, which in my opinion was okay because the band had proven on their first record that they were so above the fray that what was their sound really? I mean, Alt-J conceivably could go in a million different directions with their sound based on what they had given us on their debut. Surely I couldn't expect the band to give us one more in awesome wave after another for the next decade. So going into this new LP, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. Maybe just another direction entirely, something completely refreshing. I do know that going into this album, I did enjoy for the most part 3WW, uh, In Cold Blood, Adeline. But now that I have the entire album in front of me, I'm kind of surprised to find that it's just eight tracks and 39 minutes. And as I moved along the track list, I kind of felt that this was easily Alt-J's most inconsistent album to date, not just in terms of sound from track to track, but that also holds true for the songwriting too. You know, even though This Is All Yours was a bit of a challenging listen, at least that album felt like it had a focused, sonic concept from beginning to end. By contrast, there doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to what's happening on Relaxer, whether it be why on the third track we're suddenly treated to a really blobby and kind of tensionless cover of House of the Rising Sun. Yes, that House of the Rising Sun. Alt-J's version here really leaves a lot to be desired. And then suddenly we are transitioned into one of the kookiest and more hard-hitting songs on the entire record, Hit Me Like That Snare, where I think the band mistakes uh, effortless awkwardness for swagger. So not only do we make some weird surprise transitions between tracks and songs, but occasionally some of the tracks themselves uh, within the song are kind of difficult to follow or sort of tedious. Like the finishing pleader uh, on the album, while the end of this track may have some really grand choral vocals and a, a really beautiful instrumental presentation, the very sleepy lead up to this moment makes the end feel almost inconsequential. Trying to get the band to deliver uh, one of these more instrumentally lavish songs in a direct fashion is kind of like getting someone shy to start a conversation. Occasionally, I think the band's roundabout approach to songwriting on this record does kind of work out. I mean, I do still like 3WW, especially as an opener. I do think it kind of sets the tone for the record as um, unpleasing as that tone may be as I listen to the entire album. The folky acoustic guitars and very serene sound palette at the start of the album reminds me a lot of Yellow House era Grizzly Bear, while the subtle touches of piano and vocal harmonies kind of transition me into a beautiful lullaby. The song takes a pretty intriguing instrumental turn after this, and the inclusion of vocals from Ellie Roswell sort of turns the track uh, really sensual. But the song trails off and fizzles out not too long after this. And looking at the runtime, it's kind of hard to believe that the track is five minutes long uh, because I feel like there are just so many different parts of the, of the song that hit you so quickly and don't develop for all that long. You know, there are a lot of parts on this song, and I feel like there's a lot to these parts on this song, but when they're added up, I, I uh, something I feel like is missing. I could say that the band is maybe just being intentionally esoteric here, but even the moments on this record where I feel like they're being really straightforward uh, don't pack that much punch. Like on the song In Cold Blood, while it's still one of the better tracks on the track listing here, uh, I will take many songs off of an awesome wave over this any 
day. Though, again, the boomy percussion and the epic horn sections on this track, the groove, the kind of tinny, very bright synthesizer arpeggios, they're definitely a saving grace uh, among some of the paler songs in the track list. Dead Crush is easily another pick for me as a favorite on the album. Uh, while I do think that the synth bass line is a little lazy and that the guitars that are driving are uh, a bit plain, you know, the atmosphere isn't the most colorful or eccentric as far as instrumentation uh, when it comes to Alt-J, but the lead vocals and especially the falsettos are very kooky, very fun, and incredibly catchy. Adeline still stands out as one of my favorites on the album, easily the best slow burner here. It feels like a really gradual cinematic ascent into the night sky with all these hypnotic percussive taps and swelling orchestral instrumentation that's really cloudy and pillowy and beautiful. Some of the wild background vocals in the last half of the track I feel like is, is one of those moments where Alt-J is sort of weird, strange, very cartoonish musical ideas uh, are at their best. Is it too much to ask for a strong ending, though? The song last year is really pleasant, but it's easily one of the most half-baked ideas in the entire track listing. The lyrics are very poetic, at times incredibly moving, sort of detail uh, what seems like month to month to month of the last year in Joe Newman's life. Uh, a lot of very personal moments sung about in this song. I like the closing duet in the second half of the song as well. Uh, but again, it just feels like a linear moment where the band doesn't really stick to or develop any one idea long enough for anything to stick or have a significant amount of consequence to it. I'm not really sure what happened with this album. I can't help but feel like the band put some kind of strange and very unorthodox uh, limitations on the writing and maybe the recording process of this record in order for it to have turned out the way that it did. Because it feels like a lot of the ideas, a lot of the writing feels really fly-by-night, lightning in a bottle. Again, the band doesn't stick to any one idea long enough. Everything's sort of progressing in a linear fashion, not too much in the way of repeating choruses, refrains, which I don't necessarily think are bad limitations to put on an album. Uh, that is, if the progressions and the direction that you're going in is uh, a purposeful one, is an urgent one, is an engaging one. Unfortunately, without a modus operandi to a lot of these tracks, it seems like Alt-J's writing and performances uh, have turned really flaccid, standoffish, kind of disengaged, very forgettable and in contrast with their past work, especially their debut, somewhat unsure of itself at points. Yeah, this, this was a really strange listen. I mean, I uh, might you know, be interested in listening to it again if I understood more maybe about the process of uh, what the band was trying to achieve going into this record, just to kind of maybe hear what I think they were trying to do. Uh, but honestly, just as a raw kind of listening experience from someone who's enjoyed their past two albums, this was a really lackluster and underwhelming uh, experience for me. I'm feeling a light five on this record, Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe, and please don't cry. Just leave an angry comment in the comments if you're angry. Uh, hit up some of the videos next to my head that I think you should check out. Subscribe to the channel too, official website as well. Link in on the screen, and uh, Alt-J, relax her forever.